Alicia, Melissa, this movie was so much fun. I loved Abigail, so thank you for talking with me about it. Oh, thank you. I want to talk about horror films in general real quick. What is the scariest movie, or the movie that really stayed with you because it was scary, that you remember watching for the first time? I mean, I remember being traumatized as a kid with, with Chucky, with Child's oh, Play. Yeah. Like, that really, I was way too young, watched that, and it really scared me. Like, it would make me be scared of my stuffed animals in my room. You know, like, that level of trauma. Mm -hmm. um, Saw really traumatized me, the first one. And I didn't watch any of the others because I was like, this is too much. Like, the sawing off of the foot was too much. Another image that I have really deeply, like, ingrained in my memory is hereditary. You know that scene oh. in the car. Like, yeah. just, how does someone come up with that? Those are all ones that stick with you. Yeah. 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 What about you? I think the scariest film, well, that I seen was probably It. That, oh, like, yeah. Clowns are scared scary. me so much. There's something about clowns. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mm. And a drain. Just, yeah, no. <laughs> don't even. just freaks me right out. Uh, no. Do not follow the red balloon. No. <laughs> uh, okay, we, from clowns to vampires, horror movies have all these crazy monsters. You play a dancing vampire in the most haunting, incredible way. <laughs> but becoming a vampire means you're, like, biting people, eating people, drinking blood. What does it taste like on set to have to be a vampire? Well, we had blood that was everywhere, and then we had, like, body blood, and then we had, like, mouth blood that went, like, around our mouths, and that's, like, the one that got, like, sometimes got in our mouth, so it tasted better than the blood that was on our body. And then I also had black blood that went in my tongue. tongue. And <laughs> I love the way she says tongue. <laughs> that went in my tongue. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that tasted really good. That tasted, like, sweet. And she I was obsessed with that blood. Kept Let's asking just say, for more. yeah. <laughs> She was, she was like, can I please have more? And, and everybody, I'm going to have that my birthday party. Everybody was like, Alicia, you're good. Like, you're still, your tongue your tongue is like, still black. And she was like, I want more. I was like, Melissa, ask for more. <laughs> Just candy on set. Yeah. yeah. A true vampire. I'm getting on. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, your character, in, in all horror movies, I feel like there are lines of dialogue that, if delivered the wrong way, can be so cliche or, or we're almost silly. And in this movie specifically, you have so many lines that you deliver so deadpan so well that they look Land so perfectly. So on set, when you like, when you have one of those lines that's like, oh, this scary moment or this silly thing that if I say it the wrong way, do you ever kind of break character and laugh a bit, or how do you stay so in that moment to deliver these crazy lines that could come off almost I, cliche if you did them any other way? I do break a lot. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do laugh a lot. Um, yeah, it's very unprofessional, but it's very <laughs> funny. Um, not just with my lines, like. Catherine and Dan are so <laughs> hilarious too. Like they made us laugh a lot. Um, there's gonna be a lot of bloopers of this movie, oh, and it's gonna be so fun to to see them. I can't wait to share them. Honestly, I want to see them. Um, but yeah, there's. I, I think me personally, when when I see a line that feels like, oh, that's a line, yeah. you know, I try to like throw it away. Mm. You know, that's like my kind of yeah. mentality because I don't want it to feel like a line. I want it to feel like something that someone would say. And, I, and I've, I don't know where I heard this once. It wasn't something that I'm coming up with, but I heard it once from an actor saying like, just don't, like, don't, give, it, don't give it that much weight, like, just throw it away. And so that's what I think I do a lot in, in the movie with those kinds of lines. And as I have to ask, you are doing so much great work in the horror genre, <laughs> and we would love to see you work with Jenna Ortega again. And I want more Abigail. Is, is that the place we see you two work together? Do you guys ever talk about what you might do again in the future? I mean, I would love to work with her again. I know that she does love horror, so it would probably be in something horror that we would find each other again. Um, yeah, I mean, she is she's incredible, and she's genuinely a horror fan. So she, I know that she's constantly looking for these projects. So, yeah, I think if we were to do something together again, it would definitely be horror. I can't wait to see what you do next. Yeah. Abigail was fantastic. I can't wait for everybody else to see it too. Thank, Thank you so you. much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Kevin William, I thought Abigail was an absolute blast. Nice. It was nice. so much fun. Uh, and it, it was scary. Of course it was scary. Mm -hmm. Made me think about scary movies in general. I'd love to hear from you. Do you remember like one of the first times or one of the times you were the most scared watching a horror film? What, what title stand out to you when you think of that? The Shining. The shot. Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Freak me the hell out. That was just, you know, Jack Nicholson when he, when he just transforms from this, you know, loving, caring dead to just, I mean, he just goes there. 
um, uh, I remember just uh, being haunted by that. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I would say the Exorcist, Emily Rose. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. oh. that one, like, I remember dating a young lady at the time, and then she was like, "I'm feeling like someone's pushing on my chest." When I'm driving, I say, you see, see, this is why we can't go watch these movies, you know? <laughs> I, they, they were interested in me for that movie, and I had listened to the transcripts, and I was like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not do- I was so freaked out by it that I was like, I don't even want, yeah. I don't even want to read the script. Yeah, yeah, so that was that. Uh, was the, I, I, I was in a different headspace. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you didn't do it. Thank you. <laughs> it is crazy how these Although types of movies I do feel something on my chest right now. <laughs> yeah. I remember like The Invisible Man, I got in the car and I was like, is there anybody back there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail's gonna show up. <laughs> uh, next job. Uh, yeah. Well, no, we talk about how scary right, these movies are, but also there's a good bit of humor and, and, and like, like dark humor in these films, especially with Abigail, and your character's responsible for a lot of that, mm-hmm. Kevin. What, <laughs> And I loved it. And you, your character was so funny in this in a great uh, way. Thank uh, you. When you have to have these moments on set where you're delivering a line that you know is going to come off as like the, the kind of comic levity in a very dark setting, how do you, what is the key? Like, what is the secret sauce for making sure you deliver that well so that you get the, the laugh without taking mm. us out of it? it you just got to find the truth in there. I mean, for me, uh, I think I'm just of. Uh, uh, you know, I started off in the business as as a comedian, and uh, you know when I started touring with other comedians and 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 understood that all the other comedians were uh, mentally unstable as well, and we were all self medicating <laughs> with whatever we could get our hands on. I was like, this might not be the healthiest place for me to be. <laughs> so mm. I went. I decided I wanted to be an actor, and and um, uh, but the comedy always seems to seep out of me, and I'm I'm just grateful that these guys. We're just open uh, to letting me just 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 swing, mm-hmm. yeah. just swing hard, and you know they let me do my natural accent, which is not the accent I'm speaking in now. Uh, uh, you know I, I am Canadian Francais, so uh, it, it just felt really comfortable. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. I'm That's awesome. just grateful for that that, that opportunity. You talk about yeah. your background. I've been with you since Lost, man. Kimi, what a great villain that was. Hey. Oh, I can talk with you guys about this all day. I got one, time for one more question. And at Comic Book, we are on the road to Deadpool and Wolverine. So everybody who's ever played a mutant, I have to ask them. Yeah. Are you are you coming back? Are you gonna be the Blob again? Um, mm-hmm. I really should be, because I, I remember when when we were doing the scenes in the ring, mm-hmm. the Wolverine, like Hugh just kept saying. You're gonna end up with your own movie. Mm. You're gonna get your own movie, and then he really wanted me to come back and do the next Wolverine, and 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 uh, Blob was gonna be, um, you know, sumo wrestling champion in, in Japan. You know, when he goes to Tokyo, and and uh, I, I it, it it never pinned out. I mean, I'm game. I'm game. I'm always game. Be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta make uh, that happen. Then. Yeah. Well, yeah. Character yeah. design yeah. that was too. Yeah. yeah. That whole. Oh man. Yeah. Dan, Catherine, Abigail was awesome. So thank you for talking with me about it. Thank you. This being a scary movie got me thinking about scary movies I've seen in the past. The ones that really stuck with me. Okay. I'd love to hear from you. What is like the scariest movie you remember ever seeing in a theater that really still haunts you today? Scariest movie in a theater. Jennifer's Body was the first one I saw. And I know that's controversial because maybe you're like, it's not that scary, but at the time I was pretty young and I will never forget being that scared. I was scared to go to sleep. Like, hey, don't judge me. I thought it was horrifying. I, what's the scariest movie I saw in the theater? I mean, I saw The Shining when I was young, but that was on VHS. That counts, we can count it. Taped off, like it was on at 2 a.m. and I watched it the next day when my parents were out. It was scary. That recent one, Talk To Me, really got me. I haven't seen that. It is so scary. I I got nightmares. I'm not the same age I was when Jennifer's body came out and I still had trouble sleeping. (laughs) Did anything scare you on the set of Abigail? Did they do anything to give you the jump scare? Yes. The taxidermy. Oh, Lots of scary freaky, things. Freaky, freaky animals everywhere. Some of them were cute and sweet, and some of them were really weird and haunting. Janky foxes. The house was haunted. It was a huge mansion. You said there was a poltergeist. Way too many rooms. Books around. I had a book on the staircase where I was that I was reading. Obviously, I was reading it, and then I came back after a take, and it was directly down on the next level in the same exact place on the staircase. And that was just Matthew McConaughey on the other side of the wall, just trying to warn you guys. It was oh, scary in there. Was. Oh, the vampires! Yes. Yeah. Dan, nice guy. Nice guy. Frank, 
Not, not so nice. Not a nice guy. Awful man. Okay. Yeah. So when you're performing as Frank and you're really pushing what like a not nice guy he is, yeah. do you ever then have to like between takes be like, hey, I'm, it's, it's still me. I'm sorry. Like, how do you kind of wash that off with the cast and establish that? that I just that? thought he wasn't nice. Yeah. Yeah. They all thought I was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd love to hear about having to push it that far. And like, I mean, especially with a little kid on set. I know. Yeah. I think one of the one of the weirdest sort of hardest scenes was the scene where Frank goes into the bedroom on his own and, and like holds a gun up to Alicia's head. And like, it, it was very straight, you know, but in between, you know, we were constantly checking that she was okay, and she was just like laughing, she was giggling, she thought the whole thing was so fun and funny. And the whole way through the movie, actually, I think we, a lot of us were concerned about, you know, swearing around this child, or just like so much blood, and she was having the time of her life, and that kind of, I think it, we all relaxed around that, you know. Yeah, she was just telling me how good the blood, like the black blood tastes. She was like, I just wanted more of it. I was like, oh, okay. It's just go. sugar. Yeah. It's like sugar water. <laughs> oh, the one that they put in their mouth? Yeah, that, right. that, that was, was a special kind. Yeah. yeah, she had a lot of that going the on. The black yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. You had probably one of the most gruesome sequences in the film where you're walking across a bunch of bodies in like a, a pool of I don't know what that was. Yeah. Uh, can I hear what it was like, what they did for you? Did it actually smell bad? What was that set like? Uh, getting covered in right. I don't know what. So I don't even know what it was. It was gelatin of some kind, like oh, some yeah. kind of glycerin, right? And we had a screen test for it or a test, and it felt like being in a slushy, okay? okay? And then the day of the shoot, there was so much more stuff in it that I could not move. Like I got in and it was like <laughs> not going anywhere, guys. So it was like swimming through nothing and like genuinely I felt like I was drowning. Um, and then it had a wetsuit on to, because they didn't want me to get cold. But then I was sweating so much because it was so difficult and all the stuff got inside of the wetsuit. It was um, everything you want wow. as a horror, <laughs> you know, wow. person. Like, it would be like the next level of like a Halloween Horror Night situation. Imagine oh. that. I would volunteering. Pay, I, would, yeah, I would pay for a ticket to that experience. Dunk tank. Basically, kind of, that's yeah. my yeah. career is just a Halloween Horror Night maze. Abigail was awesome. Oh, thank you. you. Right there. You guys don't miss, I swear. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious, as this is not your first time working together, not your first time making a great horror movie together, what are you learning or what have you learned on previous titles that you kind of took with you and maybe it was a bit easier this time because you've done it before on Abigail, you mastered it? I mean, I think we learn stuff we learn stuff on everything, and we always talk about what did we learn on this. Like, and like, legitimately, we just kind of are Post constantly trying to like, mm -hmm. you know, get better and grow. And I think on this, we also don't want to just do something that's easy. So it's always like, what's the fun challenge that kind of like still fits in our sensibilities that we love, but that we haven't quite done yet or seen from us in any way. And I think I think on this, one of the things that we brought into this movie was working with Melissa again, and it was this idea of cool. How can we? We just did these two movies together that we loved and had a great experience on. How can we do, do something totally different that will really excite all of us? Little kids in horror movies are already often kind of scary. Mm -hmm. uh, you you kind of up the ante now because you have Alicia playing a vampire, a dancing vampire child. So what was it like to bring that out of her? Uh, have this young kid play such an intense part that also requires a ton of maturity when we learn the story of the character. You know, the truth the truth of the matter is is that we didn't have to bring it out of Alicia. Like it, the that maturity and that creativity and that bravery just is who she is. I, I mean, so many of the really amazing like nuanced moments in this movie are are just Alicia doing doing her thing when she's Incredible. when she's dancing with the headless body and she drapes the hand on her face that was just Alicia during a during a tech rehearsal just like, like playing around and like wouldn't this like, be yes. funny and <laughs> as i'm staring into the neck and we're like oh my god you are you are a brilliant i mean she's just brilliant and i think that that is um she just has a really amazing intuition and I think a fearlessness uh, that that you see in 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 all all facets of the performance in this movie. Oh, she was great. Everybody was great, but of course, you don't have this movie without the perfect Abigail. Yeah. You guys found yeah. her. This this is sadly you know one of the last films Angus Cloud has has worked on before he passed away, and it had me wondering like when you guys were in the edit working on the film, did you? What kind, like, did you find yourself having to do anything with additional care or change anything about the film, given the fact that he had passed? How did you guys handle that uh, approaching his role in this film? It was. It made the edit. It was emotionally. It was hard. Yeah. But there was also something that that we really wanted to make sure that he 
was really showcased in the movie and that you know it's, yeah. it's really easy to go in and cut like the character stuff and the little beats that you maybe do or don't need but for us we were like it's so it's so special anyways in a movie and then to have it be angus's last movie we didn't want to just, just short change that in any way yeah we felt responsibility and so we really, I mean, we really, we mined the footage. We made sure that we looked for everything from him. If there was any moment that was kind of special, because there's a way to use it. Is there a way for us to get this in? Because in a lot of ways, there's there's also a, a, you know, you could watch this movie and know that we took extra care to make sure that the Angus stuff all lived. And even, we even put a lot of stuff on the, you know, the, the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Because he really was always making drill. everybody laugh. And so he's <laughs> yeah. a lot of jokes. It's just as much as we can do with this movie to help keep his memory alive. I think. Absolutely. I mean, he, he was great in it. And the he's movie so overall good. is fantastic. It's got me. I want Abigail too tomorrow. And you guys, there's, <laughs> there's some really cool stuff. So I'm going to end it with this. There's some really cool stuff by the end of this film where it's like, oh, we could go here. We could go there. Is this the start maybe of a larger universe, maybe like a monster world that you guys might be interested in going back to? I think that we would return to anything Abigail related in a heartbeat. There's no design to do that. We didn't go into that into this movie with any with any design to do that because you know our favorite movies and the movies that we love to make are ones that do feel like they have a really definitive a really definitive and satisfying character and even if there are certain things that that are left unfinished, you know, we we also love stories that exist outside of outside of the frame. And um, so I look, we'll, we'll show up to do anything with this with this incredible actor, and, and with to work with Universal again would be would be such an honor. But no no specific design. But we love that you said that. We love that you think there's more story to be told. That's really awesome. Fingers are crossed. I can't wait for everybody to see Abigail because I want to talk about it with all my friends. Oh, I love that. So congratulations on another great movie, you, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, I love guys. that.